Thank you guys for, for coming. It's very gratifying to, you know, we, we pour our heart and soul into making this tool, and it's, it's great to see that people are interested. So thank you for, for being here. So my goal, and other people's goal here too over the next few days, is, is to make you feel as comfortable as possible when it comes to interpreting or explaining your machine learning models. So this idea that machine learning is a black box, uh, somehow completely opaque, uh, that, that's no longer the case. And I want to be very clear about that. That's categorically no longer the case. And we hope in the next two days to provide you a lot of the tools that you need to get started understanding how to interpret and explain machine learning models. So if this is something you're interested in, please feel free. Come see me. Come see the team at the booth. We'd love to talk to you about it. We have uh, resources both for driverless AI that I'm going to give you a little intro to right now. And then we also have uh, some resources on the open source side, too, for H203. And the H203 team is going to be incorporating some of the things that I'm going to show into the open source product, too. OK. So my goal is just to give you a really quick taste of what we're going to do a little bit more of in, in the hands-on. So really quick, can I get a show of hands for people who have heard about Lime, L-I-M-E? OK. What about Shapley values? You're going to hear a lot about Shapley values. OK, good, good. So, so you know, I didn't see as many hands for Shapley. So that's something really try to key into that over the next two days, because that's something we're really excited about. It's a um, technique that won the Nobel Prize in economics in 2012, a technique from game theory that we're now applying to machine learning models to get exact numeric variable contributions that can be used to make reason codes for machine learning models. OK, so I'm going to stop blabbing and, and just show you some stuff. All right, so here's our little summary. After you built your driverless AI model, after the automated machine learning runs, we give you a dashboard for how to interpret the models. And there's some basic information here. Uh, I'm going to scroll down to my favorite part of what we do. And, um, we like, to show, we like to show some of the complex features that we made, but then we also like to show, hey, what happened in that original data set, the data set that you as the user should understand, what was important there? You know, not just what was important in the uh, complex features that the system made itself. And I think that's kind of a unique thing about our approach is we like to show you things in the sort of complex engineered feature space and also in your original feature space, which should be more comprehensible to you. OK, so here's the first time we're going to see these Shapley values. Sorry. I had an internet crash right before I got up here. OK. All right. So uh, these are what we call global Shapley values. And this, this is like feature importance. So, so who's done feature importance with their random forest models or their GBM models? OK, so you'll notice this looks fairly similar to that, except for you can see that these are signed, which is really nice. We have some negative contributions down here. We have some positive contributions up here. So that alone is a nice advance, right, to be able to tell mm, this variable on average drives the model down. This variable on average drives the model up. So I like to look at this screen and get kind of a basic idea about what are the important drivers in the model. And so I can see here um, some of these payment statuses. This is a credit card example. So I can see some of these payment statuses are really important. People's most recent payment statuses are very important for predicting whether they're going to default on their next payment status, shockingly. Okay. So now, once I get kind of a basic idea of what's driving the model on a global scale, I like to see how these variables are behaving. And to do that, we use partial dependence. And so this is the average prediction of the model, the, dr the, the driverless AI model, across different values of this important feature, someone's credit limit. Okay? So I can now get an idea of what variables are important. I can start getting an idea of how they're behaving in the model. 
And then I can get an idea of how they interact with each other, right? This is one thing that we know makes machine learning models more accurate sometimes than their linear counterparts is this ability to find high degree interactions on their own. And so we like to use this little decision tree uh, diagram to show how the features are interacting, right? So very quickly what I've done is I've looked at the overall drivers of the model. I, I saw how one of them was behaving on average in the model. And now I'm seeing how the variables might work together, right? Potentially there's an interaction between someone's credit limit, someone's most recent repayment status, uh, another potential interaction, um, like down lower in the tree, if things are below each other in the decision tree, we say that there's a potential interaction there. So here we're catching on, on a very uh, pot potentially important interaction in the model between someone's most recent repayment status and their credit limit. Okay, here's our interpretation of Lime. Uh, and, and Lime was probably the technique that, that kicked this all off, this, this new buzz around interpretability. And we're really lucky to be able to work with actually one of the inventors of Lime, uh, Samir Singh, Professor Samir Singh, to, to get guidance from him on the, the future of the product. So we're super excited about that. Um, and I can use this dialogue to pick a single point, right? And this, this is where, uh, honestly, a lot of the things I've shown you, people in the audience may know, mm, I could have done that 20 years ago. That's true. But this is where things get really interesting. So now, this is where we break the model prediction down into these accurate contributions from each feature in the model. So now, on a row by row basis, I can tell you the variable importance. And from this variable importance, I can uh, create reason codes that are needed in credit scoring. Uh, or if you're not in credit scoring and you're just interested to know why your model made the prediction it made for any one person, now you know why. Or at least you can link it back to the variables themselves. And there's no approximation here. I think that's something that's really key. When we first started going down this path, we were highly reliant on, on these surrogate model techniques like Lime. Now we're able to leverage the driverless AI model itself and come up with these very accurate, precise, local feature contributions. So this isn't for a single GBM or a single decision tree or something like this. This is for the complex stacked ensemble that driverless AI created. We can still get these very precise feature contributions for every single row of the data set. And we can deploy them. We can deploy them in production environments with either Python or Java. So, I don't want to ramble on too much because we're going to get into the deeper details later. I just wanted to give you uh, a little uh, preview for how we're doing this at H2O. And like I said, if you have questions about what we're doing, uh, please come see us. Please come talk to us. Thank you so much.